Hi everyone, my name is Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Forum Live. Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight every Friday live from East London. Today we're going to show you how you could build a live performance template using Ableton Live. All right, so today we are joined by Point Blank instructor and Ableton certified trainer, Freddie Frogs, to show you how his live performance template came together. And remember, if you want to learn more about Ableton Live, make sure you check our courses at pointblanklondon.com. And of course, we are completely live, so get your questions for Freddie in the chat and we'll get to them throughout the broadcast. Freddie, welcome back. Hello, Declan. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Nice, I'm very I'm well. hot. It is hot, but we'll get, you know. Does it get you shouldn't there? complain about that. No. Not in the London, UK. London is yeah. great when it's hot, yeah. Exactly. Speaking of London being great, you've been up in Manchester recently. <laughs> yeah, it's been, the weather's been great as well, but yeah. I haven't seen much of that weather. Yeah, because you've been, been working on something quite I've been cool, in a right? theatre. I've, the, uh, the I've, been, I've been working with Damon Albarn and oh, right, uh, a whole crew of technicians on a new musical called Wanda.Land, where Ableton Live is at the heart of the, uh, the whole show. And so right. I've, I was programming Ableton for the show. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's an amazing experience working with like more, you know, very professional technicians and, and artists and, and you know, there's a nine piece band as well. So we're kind of joining backing track and live uh, orchestration and it's all like kind of all overlapping wow. in a wonderful world uh, directed by Rufus Norris. Uh, an amazing experience. The, the show is amazing. It'll be actually, it's played for, for 10 days in Manchester for the Manchester International Festival. And then it'll be played in London, December, January, February next year. Yeah. So if you're London, yeah, you have to go and see that show. It's wicked, it's really yeah. good. Really. Nice one. It's a wonderful And how, much, how different is that to what you're gonna to show today? Uh, it's very different. Very different <laughs> We're still yeah. using live, so it's the same template. It's the same platform, but it's a very different approach to it. I mean, the, the, the template in the theater uh, is running, we're running a few backing tracks, so that's all stems from Damon Orban. And then we have all the sampler instruments that you know uh, give the sounds to the the, the, the MD. Yeah. Um, we're also sending time code for the the video synchronization, uh, cues for the light synchronizations, and all this you know uh, on the, the thumb of uh, one person, the MD. And you know he's got a few pedals, he's able to now, and he's conducting the, <laughs> like the orchestra. He's, 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 he's amazing. Yeah. He's conducting the orchestra in the pit. He's mime he's, he's conducting the actors on the cast on stage. Op playing keys, obviously, operating Ableton Live at the same time. This man is just look, a genius. Yeah, so um, yeah, we're giving all that power to this man, and uh, and it's a it's a very amazing show. It's, it's a, and it was a very uh, challenging uh, work as well. Uh, cool. We had to really nice work one. around. Max for Live was uh, also involved uh, in the process. We we made special objects just for the show to to, yeah, to make yeah. it to make it work. Really, cool. it was really challenging. It was amazing. And this this template you're going to show today. Right, and today, yeah, today we, we're going to look at a template that's more dedicated it's in between sort of live set it's, it's a live set but it, it I think it's more related it's nearer to a DJ sort of approach to live performance okay. Th this template is taken it's 20 12 years in the making yeah I started in 2003 to make this template uh, I, I play with many different templates in many different situations and, and but this is the one I use the most and I'm going to share it with you guys because um, you know I, I this template somehow was made of bits and bobs I gathered from other people like mm -hmm. Morova or Crystal Distortion or, or Nick Ronin who is uh, an instructor at Point Blank. Yeah. You know, um, you know, we will we, we'll pass each other's loads of uh, uh, techniques or, or, or let's say modules you know, because you know Ableton is kind of a modular sort of platform. So I, I wanted to give it that back to you guys, and um, so you're going to be able to download this. Um, I'm going to leave obviously all the objects as is, as, you're, I'm, going, as I'm going to show you. However, two third-party um, effects are involved in, in that template. So if you don't have these, uh, it's okay. You can still use the template. You just remove these, these, two, right. these two modules and, and okay. you, you'll be just fine. But I mean, it's uh, Isotop Stutter Edit. Mm -hmm. And it's a patch for reactor as well. So it's um, a, what you call it, an ensemble for, for reactor. And we're also using, um, in this template, I'm using three controllers. I mean, you, you can reassign your own controllers to, to, to this template, obviously. But if you have a push, we, I'm, I'm using the push, I've been using the push on, on stage for about two years uh, with that setup. And I'm going to use it in user mode. Yeah, so you, you know you have three modes on push. You have the uh, let's go back. You have the the note mode, which gives you usually you know the uh, 
the, the pads to play like a piano. You have the, the session mode, which, which, which basically shows you the clips uh, you mm -hmm. have on your session view. And you have the user mode, which turns uh, your push into a fully customizable uh, um, controller, just like any other controller, you would say, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you can then, therefore, remap absolutely every button on this uh, object, apart from the user button, which you know, allows you to get out of the user yeah. mode. It's the only one you can't re remap. So yeah, we're using the the push is used mostly as like a multi effect unit, uh, where all, all the buttons here are assigned to loads of different effects. Uh, here the the, uh, the launch pad, which is the same launch pad I bought when it came out. So this 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 piece of kit is so reliable, it's quite scary, uh, and that that's the structure of my live set. Yeah, uh, so launching clips and launching scenes. Yeah. I also use an iPad uh, with the Lemur, the app that's loaded onto it. Uh, so it's a very reliable uh, system, this Lemur app. Um, so I, I'll, I'll go through that. But so we're going to look at in, in 40 minutes or so, we, we're going to try to you know, make it as thorough as, thorough, thorough as we can. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at the routing throughout the platform, how the signal is, is sent. Uh, nothing too complex there. Um, then I'll, um, I'll show you um, how the, the returns are, are, are used. Live looping, so creating live loops on the on the fly and incorporating that with your music, and um, and all the little uh, little gimmicks and little modules I've added to that. Okay, so shall we start? Yeah, First yeah. of all, yeah, th this is this is basically if you if you can uh, see my screen, this is basically um, um, it, the stems from my own music. Okay, so I'm not playing somebody else's music, so that's why I call this a live set as opposed to a DJ set because mm -hmm. it's my own music. Um, and these are stems. I've got eight stems. So stems is the word we use to describe uh, the extraction of the sounds of your own track under uh, usually an audio format. Yeah. Uh, so I'll ext I've extracted the kick, the bass, the snares and breaks, the hats and percussions, and then three, uh, four stems of melodies. Yeah. Um, I, I think Native Instruments coming up with a new system called Stems for Tractor. Yeah. So you know, all of you uh, should very soon be acquainted to what Stems are. However, I, I, I've read the Native Instrument Stem system is going to be four stems. Mm -hmm. So I guess as a producer, we're going to now export our sounds, our, our tracks as drums, bass, melody, vo vocals, for example. Yeah, so you, you you'll be able to remix people's music as stems, but this is yeah. eight stems. I used to have twelve, but then when the launch pad came out, and it, because it has eight rows, uh, eight columns, I had to kind of shrink and adapt, and, and it makes it more manageable in on stage to have eight stems instead yeah. of twelve. Yeah, so Good. maybe we could like hear how it works before we. Shall I? It? Shall I do yeah, a, little, do a little? Okay, so I'll do yeah. a little, uh, a little something. Okay, so and then I'll, I'll take you through it. Okay, so let's. Uh, yeah, that's working. Okay. So it's a um, you know, party meeting. <laughs> yes. So basically being able to scroll through. To, to warm up, so you got me a little bit, you cook me a little bit cool there. And usually I'm standing, bouncing about, I'm not sitting on a chair.
Yeah, I thought you'd get me a little cool now. A few mistakes, hey. Get the idea? So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of fun, there's a lot of flexibility. You can really remix your own music on stage. And um, a, a huge amount for flexibility and, and uh, improvisation. Yeah. Um, can go a lot further, obviously, but you know I don't want to spend uh, too much time doing this because I want to really show people how this is done. Start improvising. Let's do a little live looping. Loops I'm making up on, on the spot here. Okay, so you get the idea, yeah? So it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's total improvisation. Uh, when you get going, it's, it's never the same ever again. I mean, you, 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 every, every show is different and you can go off on one and, uh, you know, you, you can do live looping. You can also, um, I have a drum sequence that I didn't include in the template, but you can also resequence some drums in real time. And basically, yeah, when you get going, this is like an instrument. The idea really is to turn your eyes away from the computer as much as possible. I tuck it away usually to uh, focus just on the, uh, on the controller so people don't, don't feel like you're, you know, you're, you're playing you know, backing tracks uh, back at them and you're really doing stuff. Yeah. And you, know, you can see I'm constantly busy uh, shaping my sounds, shaping the structure. And uh, well, first of all, uh, <coughs> what I've discovered over time is that even if I didn't have, for instance, my, uh, my push with me, for, for some reason it stopped working or whatever, as long as I've got the structure to, I can still have a good show. And it's happened to me. Basically what I'm trying to say to people is often people tend to, tend to get bogged down or, or, or carried away with their effects on stage. Um, the effects are only here to serve the, the structure, to enhance the structure. The main thing is to have a really good structure in your, in your, in your set. Uh, you can make it up, obviously, and the more live you are, the better, I think. Mm -hmm. But you really have to privilege to, 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 to give the, the priority to your structure and really send stuff at the right time and give it a nice sort of impulse every time. Yeah. And, and there the, the effects will really enhance everything. But you know, if, you, if you give priority to, it, to the effects, I think you're, you, you're taking a chance to lose a little bit the... Uh, the, the audience, but obviously this depends obviously on the type of music you're making, yeah, as, yeah. as always, okay. yeah? Cool, all right, so let me show you a little bit how this is working. Um, the, um, the push here at the top row push controls the mute uh, of the, the mute buttons of each channel. So you can see here channel one is, numbered, is, is labeled kick and the mute button for that is here, all right? So the kick is the only uh, sound I use as, uh, let's play another track. Let's take off the, uh, the loop. Okay, so the, the kick drums are the, it's the only MIDI track. As you can see here, um, I've loaded a drum rack with loads of kicks I've used for my production as one shot, you know, just one single hit into a simpler, I mean, into a rack. And basically I'm triggering these with, uh, with, um, with MIDI notes. 
The reason why it's the only MIDI element in there, because it's, it's not very heavy, do you know what I mean? Just the yeah. drum rack is not that heavy on the CPU, because your priority is keeping the CPU as low as possible, mm -hmm. to get a really reactive machine so you can get a, a very low buffer size, you don't need, you know, you can get a really quick reactive machine to turn this into an instrument and you can really express yourself. Um, after 12 years of, of using that, you know, of, of elaborating and, and improving that template, I've, I've completely become completely proficient in there. And when I get going, I don't think, I just really play my instrument. Yeah. And this is the idea behind, you know, building a, a, a live set. So the idea to keep the CPU as low as possible to really be uh, spontaneous with your music. And so having a, a MIDI format also enables me to, uh, for, for the kick, also enables me to, to have some MIDI effects, like uh, an arpeggiator. Okay, so that's an yeah. arpeggiator in front of the kick drum. Let's have a look at it here. Uh, and it's coupled up with a beat repeat. So the beat repeat and the arpeggiator work together. Uh, when I switch one on, the other switches itself on as well. So it gives us a little bit more uh, bounce to it. It's good for, for transitions, for example. Um, that, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, the kick fat mm -hmm. channel. Um, then on, on the second channel, channel number two, it's labeled bass, obviously, it's bass line. So that's audio. And all the rest is audio, apart from uh, some of the, the live looping I'm doing, but that's audio. Why? Because what if I'm, I'm using a different synth every time I make a bass line. It doesn't have to be the same synth. So having, let's say, uh, three or four or five different uh, external third-party synthesizer into my live set, well, uh, it's not something I'm, I'm, I want to do for my CPU. So, and, and I'm talking five, it could be ten, or, you know, because in that template today, I've only got three tracks. You can see here, the blue, the blue clips are it's one tune with different scenes. The pink ones, uh, it's another tune, and uh, the, the red ones as well. Obviously, like a DJ, I will create a symbiosis. I will imbricate the tunes with each other. You know, I'm going to jump from you know, the drums from one tune. Let's do it now, actually. Um, let's play the drums from one tune here, for example, and the bass line of another tune. So, I'm going to go for the third channel, and that's you know. The, Obviously, a loop from another track, and yeah. you know you start completely melting or merging all the songs together. So back to the, the bass channel. Um, the bass can be uh, distorted. This one, first of all, is um, I think it's the uh, the vinyl distortion, isn't it? Let me just check again. Yeah, it's a rack. Obviously, everything is into racks. You know, the, the racks you know makes gives you a lot more potential with your your your, your music. Yeah, so I'm splitting the the bass uh, frequencies. So the, the, the bassiest frequencies of the bass sound are not being distorted, and the uh, the highest frequencies, which is uh, for me here, 134 uh, hertz. Anything above that uh, gets a, a treatment, which is overdrive distortion, a chorus to widen it up, um, a bit of redux to you know, lower the beat rate and give it a bit more grit, and a tiny bit of reverb. So this is what you're hearing now, without and with. Let's experiment with another bass line. So that's bass line without the effect. With the effect. It's, it's subtle, isn't it? But yeah. you can hear the grit, obviously, coming in. Uh, I've got another distortion as well, which is this time the vinyl distortion. A lot more aggressive. It's nice, you know, like three o'clock in the morning. So you, you want you want that you want that we'll grit in your bass line. Uh, and I've got also a, a, a wobble sort of uh, LFO, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and you can change the wobble speed. But one thing I find really useful, um, you see, if I if I enable the uh, the wobble button here. I can immediately see the wobble down at the bottom. Something that I discovered quite late, actually, is that in Ableton Live, you can actually map. Look at that. I'm going to zoom in. You can map. You see here the, the, the name of your object can actually be mapped to the same control you're using. You see I'm using number 76 here? Yeah. Well, that's the same control I was just touching here on my, uh, on my, uh, my push. So basically, it means that when you're actually using an effect, you see the effect on your screen. Oh, so changes to that. It, it, that. it oh, well, changes okay. automatically. Let, let's use, um, let's touch that dial. Look, I touch something on my on my push. It updates automatically and shows me what I'm using. Oh, okay. That's yeah, cool. it's really really simple to do. Really useful. 
uh, yeah, you see I'm touching the wobble here, not the distortion. You see, I, I see the distortion straight away. Uh, and the wobble, uh, same thing, yes. You see here at the bottom, you can see here the LFO rate for the auto filter. So it's pretty cool. I love this uh, kind of like deeping sort of frequencies here. So let's change the wobble speed now so you can hear it against the kick. So it's talking a little bit more. All right, so that's yeah. the bass. You always want to be a distortion on your bass, don't you? Yes. But as I said earlier on, you split the, dis the, the bass frequencies with a, a, a rack, yes? Yeah? So you don't, you don't actually distort the, the bass frequencies of the bass, otherwise they, you lose the, uh, the actual weight of the bass. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go for channel three, which is uh, the snares and usually the breaks, which can, I think, be sent into a, a delay here. It's on the return uh, B. Return B is a delay. That is on the uh, tape machine uh, style, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll get you through the, uh, the delays in a minute. So you can do that if you want. Um, and now the uh, hi hats and percussions. Okay, so that's channel four hi hats and percussions. Now, if I take the bass away, this is now the, 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 the drum sound. I mean, for example, um, Native Instruments is going to give you, the, I think, one stem of drums. You want to have access to each individual sound in your drums with these stems, but we do here have access to that, and I recommend you do that. It's a lot more fun. I mean, how much impulse do you get in a live set when you add another layer of hats, you know? Yeah. If you bring it all at once, that's it, nice, cool. You know, you, you get people into the groove and then you add the hats on the top or percussions and it really adds something to the groove. Now, what's important now about routing, and this is where I, I wanted to, to get you guys, uh, if you open the I.O. section of, of your tracks, you notice that my, uh, my drum parts, which is uh, track here, number one and three and four, they're all being sent to a bus, a drum bus. So a, a bus is just a, a normal audio track in Ableton Live, I've called it drums, here it is. And basically, again, with the routing, if you send uh, a signal to a, a new channel, you find that automatically in Live 9, it goes into monitor in uh, setting, which means that the sound is let through into the fader. So basically, we're merging these three channels of drums into one. Yeah. This enables us to then uh, process the three sounds at once to give more cohesion. For example, here on the, on the chain of effects on that uh, drum bus, I've got Stutter Edit, which is a, an isotope product, which is now mapped to these squares here on my um, push. Let's, see, let's have a listen. It's, a, it's an awesome uh, trick. I've, I've done a presentation on these isotope here for you guys. Yeah, that's exactly so let, let's, yeah, let's, let's hear this again. Let's close this guy. And Yeah, it's, it's always a lot of fun. You know, just little tap, taps here and there, you can... And that's on the whole drums bus. Yeah. yeah. I'm making it up a little too hard here, but just to, so everybody hears the, the type of effect. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's really cool. You know, I use it quite, you know, sparsely, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, there's always a temptation. It's, uh, it, it's very, very, it's very in your face. It's a very in your face, yeah. yeah. You know, I've, I've learned to, to take it easy <laughs> on that because it's... Especially after a few beers, right? Yeah, yeah, you get going, man. Really. Yeah. all the time. So back um, now with the, the rest of the chain, we have behind the eyes, the top stutter edit. I can hit the bass line now. Um, but yes, of course, here I've got um, now my, uh, my Lemuel patch, which is I've given to you guys as well, yeah? You've got the Lemuel patch as well in the, in the folder uh, we're going to, to pass on to you. Yeah. A Lemuel doesn't cost um, much at all, I think it's 19 pounds. You put that on your iPad and you get this amazing controller that you can actually design yourself. Let me show you. Um, I've got the Lemuel editor here. Let me just open it up. There it is. It's a really stable system, by the way. Yeah, it's extremely reliable. Yeah, it works over USB now, doesn't it? And then you update. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, 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 actually, I actually really like it being uh, wireless because yeah. you can like, walk about and make, make, <laughs> make sounds while you're, you're on stage. Um, so you see, this is the linear editor, and you just bring your objects, you resize them, you color them, you decide what type of message they're going to send to Ableton Live, and basically you make your own little controller. Uh, now, it's obviously uh, you know, uh, not a physical controller, it's not the same as having a real fader, but I got used to it eventually. And basically, um, then you, you transfer that um, uh, wirelessly, wirelessly to your, your, your iPad. Um, so th this is the, the template I've got. There's three pages. Um, this main page is here for filtering of the buses, first of all. So that's the filter for the drum bus I was just actually talking about. Mm -hmm. 
This, oops, where's my life set gone? There. Yeah, so I'm filtering, obviously the bass is not filtered, it's not part of my drum bass. So that's the resonance for it. Oh, sorry, here. Because I like boosting the resonance around here. If I get the right, you know, on the sound system it's a lot more obvious. If you get the right place, you can really add a lot of boost to your, your, your beat all of a sudden, you know. I'm just making it really strong here. But you can really control the, the amount of weight there is on your kick drum because you get the resonance here. So if you, get, if you get it right, it's really interesting to, to boost at one stage. Even after you broke the hats in, for example, and you're already given that one more layer, well, you can actually boost a little bit the kick in there, sort of give it a little bit harder, even. Now, I've got also some beat repeats, which I'll control here. That's the masher. Quite groovy, yeah? And that's a, a more, uh, slightly harder. Which is great for... Yeah, good transition technique here. Yeah, yep. cool. Uh, so now, onto the melodies. Uh, I think that's it about, yeah, that's it. That's about all of the drum effects I've got. Now, channel five is usually the main melody, and it usually the contra melody for that is channel six. So let's hear it. So that's, yeah, my main, you know, sort of lean sound. And the contra melody that goes with it. Uh, and usually seven and eight are either another pair of important melody, contra melody, or they actually uh, just have more sound effects like uh, sound. So, okay, and, and these obviously are also being flown or uh, uh, sent to a bus, which is called Mellow here. So I can actually have the, the same kind of principle I had on my, my drums and affect all my, my melodies and the bass simultaneously. Now, there's a, there's a, a special object, a special uh, routing, let's have a look. The, uh, the Melody 5 and 6, Melody 1 and 2 they're called here, they, you see they're being sent to another bus called Bus Melody. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to show you what that is. To the very right hand side here, I've got a folder called Utility, it's a group, yeah? These are all the channels, all the tracks I don't need to see in the live set. They're just here to, you know, route stuff and, and route the messages through the platform. And here I've got a Bus Melody where these two channels here, 5 and 6, are routed first. And then from there, they're sent into the main melody bus because I want to affect these two in a, in a different way. Let me just play that to you. It's here. Where did I put that? Control. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's the, the warbler. So I can do this to these two tracks only. And then they're being sent and merged with the rest again into the main bus. I didn't want to add, it's a very strong effect, I didn't want to have it on all the sounds. Uh, I wanted to just give it to two sounds. So you see, it's amazing how flexible live is. Out of the, the four melody channels, two of them are being sent to a first bus where they're processed individually or with a special effect. And then they're being sent to another bus where the two other channels that I had left behind are now merged again with. So I can then affect them together again. So you can have sub-stages, sub-buses, yeah. sub if you may. Uh, extremely flexible system. And then obviously we have another isotope stutter in it, just for the melodies. So it's another instance of the same uh, effect. I've got four, four melodies this time. So look, here it is again. Really cool, right? It's, they're different effects than the, the drum ones, yeah? I selected them. Pretty cool, huh? You can really sort of like rework your melodies. Um, two beat repeats here. A bit stronger than... You see, they reorganize and reordering a little bit the, uh, the melodies here. Same here. I juggle a lot between the two yeah. to give a little bit more variations to my, uh, my, my drums. Okay? Now obviously the drums go, um, the, the melody, sorry. The melodies can go into the, the, the return track. So return track A here. Reverb. Okay, it's a sidechain reverb. You can hear it pumping. It's on return A. 
It's only it's the same delay we heard earlier on for the snare, which is actually mapped here. Really cool, hey. So let's have a look at that. It's, it's um, very interesting uh, sounding delay. Obviously, it's a ping pong delay, you see. So if you download the template, you can just grab that delay and put it in your uh, in your, yeah. your workflow, guys. Or you don't any have of, any of these racks. Any of any of the the, the racks you, you you you're seeing here today. This is a brilliant one, yeah. Um, let's, let's hear it. That's the uh, the amount. It's controlling not just the feedbacks, controlling the groove as well, yeah, the, the swing. I don't usually have a lot of that. And then the delay t the delay time here. Yeah, pretty cool, cool effects, yeah? Uh, there we have a pitch delay. And it's mapped here. Yeah. Pretty twisted kind of like... Kind of flanging at the same time, yeah? Yeah. Pretty twisted, isn't it? You can apply that to the four. Yeah, it's really twisted. I like that for transitions and stuff. And the fourth uh, return is a feedback return. So let's raise the feedback amount and let me show you how this works. You can hear the feedback happening already. I'll show it to you here. So you know in Ableton Live, you can, you can send the, 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 the returns back to themselves. Yeah. And you can hear that my return here is cranked up. It's, it's fully, you know, distorted in there. But you can't hear the distortion, can you? No. It's really tame. 20, 27 dB. So, yeah. Oh, it's going over the roof. You can't even see it going like it's over, over the roof here. I can filter it. It's pretty cool. And back down. Uh, the reason I can do that, and it's not sounding distorted or even loud, is because basically the delay itself, the, the, the return track, you see, it's actually being sent. Look at where it's being sent. It's not being sent directly to the master. It's being sent to another track, which is a part of my utility folder. Look at it. It's called Feedback Safe. It, it, it does what it says on the tin. It's basically, basically by routing the, the return feedback back into another channel, you now, with that channel, have control over the loudness and the filtering of the feedback. The, the principle behind loop feedback is that it needs actual signal to generate itself and regenerate itself. It's a, it's a feedback loop. So if you were to filter the signal directly on the return, you would lose the actual feedback. It would, it would it just disappear. You need sound to generate the feedback. So mm -hmm. um, by placing the sound into another channel and filtering that instead of the, the actual feedback loop, you can actually do the filtering without losing the sound. Um, this is really, uh, really convenient. Not a lot of people, I think, know that. Uh, because I haven't really seen anybody using it so much like so, you see. So on this channel, um, I've got a, um, a, another rack with, as I said, a filter and a limiter to control it a little bit better, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's the returns. We've got some master effect. We've got a repeat, repeat. That's a kind of a stop effect. Okay, we've got a gate tremolo. Okay, now that's the basic workarounds. Now you understand, I think, a lot more a little bit about the routing, how things are, are, are yeah. being, are being uh, merged together into buses and then sent to the master. Okay, carry on? Yeah, yeah. It's full on, eh? There's a lot yeah. to look at, yeah? Okay, now. Well, we got about five minutes and then we'll take some questions. Okay, cool. Uh, on the, one, of the feedback, one of the returns here, I've got a patch from Reactor. It's called Beat Lookup. It's basically a sampler that allows you to resample in real time. Yeah. Now, I'm using another technique called the Magic Sense. The Magic Sense is a technique where you can basically, with a phase cancellation, delete or yeah, delete, get rid of the original dry sound in the return or in the master and keep just the sound of the effect. Like a dry, wet signal, but in the returns. It's, it's quite, I, I probably would do a, another whole full. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll look into that. An yeah. Another FFL for that. <laughs> and basically here you got, uh, you got, you got the beat lookup. So, which means that when, when I, these are the two buttons that enable me to send either the drums here or the melodies into the beat lookup. So let's do it on the drum so you can hear it properly. So when I enable this button, nothing happens. 
if it's just now I'm sending it, but you can't hear the, the difference. However, once it's been sent there, I can use all these buttons to do this. Really little tiny glitches like that. Yeah. But the cool thing is that when I want to look what I just did, I can. Everything I just did is captured in real time. And I can juggle back between the real signal and the captured signal. Let's do it on the melodies as well. See, I'm now into the looping. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's carry on. We can also have live looping. With these windows here on the iPad, the sound effects, which you will get on the template. I've left the sound in the template, so let's make it really horrible now. So you can hear nice transition effect. This can be looped in real time with the looper in Ableton Live. You press record on the beat. Now. You can hear now the loop I just created. That loop can be manipulated in many different ways, but let's add more sound to it. Let's press the Add button. And... And... You can hear that the sound is included in the loop. I've got a vocal page as well, where I can actually add to the loop as well. Let's do some vocal, chopped up vocal. You get that in the template. And all of that isn't part of the stem. It's just like no, that's a live looping. It's not part, it's layering, it's, it's added to the stem. Now, all of these live looping can be resequenced with the beat VP to put it even more in time. See, I'm now re looping the loop to place it, to quantize it into the groove. I can make it faster. Okay? I can pre pitch shift it. Filter it. It's completely synchronized with the beat as well. Let's go back to the loop. Now I can also add a delay to it. You can hear the delay now. Cool. And this this can be added to the to create transitions and stuff. Okay. Uh, that's the live looping on, uh, on the sound effect, which is really interesting. Now, however, I can also loop the whole master of my, uh, my, uh, my live set. Let's have a look at the master section here. You can see the looper. That probably will be the, the last thing I will show you today. Yeah, yeah? We yeah. have to, to go, but it is really cool. Obviously, a, a question is raised about mastering, because if you were to export, if you were to export your stems with the mastering in place, the mastering doesn't happen the same if you, if you bring 10 sounds at once into a limiter, for example, or into a compressor, the compressor doesn't react the same because it's got those 10 sounds melted or merged together. So when you ext extract stem one at a time, the mastering doesn't react the same way. So I prefer to extract my stems without mastering and I apply a generic mastering on my, uh, my master section or my master uh, track right. here. You see, it's just a multiband compression and a limiter. It's very generic. Yeah. Now, what I wanted to show you just now is this little guy here. It's a looper onto the master. So let's uh, do something interesting. Okay, let's um, use some effects whilst I loop. Now. Ah, didn't work. <laughs> yes, that's it, now it worked. <laughs> I, I missed the one bar. So you see, what you're hearing now, okay, I'm gonna switch off my channels. You're still hearing the sound. What you're hearing here is the buffer into the looper. And that's on the master channel. So basically, I can now prepare for the next cue, for example. Okay, now it's back. Let's just now shorten the loop. And shorten again. And now reverse it. And stop it. I was able to see jump back to the real live set. And I'm gonna go back to the loop. 
So I'm juggling between the loop and the real life set, which is uh, at that stage when you start doing stuff like that, and if you do it well, the crowd starts losing it a little bit because they really can't follow what's happening here. Because yeah. you can keep a loop for like a few minutes and then back on it. You know, so they're hearing they're hearing something they've heard ten minutes or five minutes ago in the live set. You know, like, little, you give them a little hint of what they've heard before, stuff like that. You know, really interesting. You can really juggle like the reverse. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, what I'm gonna give you guys. I know it's a little bit much to take on in 40 minutes. Most of, of some of the stuff has probably gone way over your head. It's cool. You grab the template. I'm gonna give you that template with one of the songs you've heard, the first one, the, 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 the kind of uh, this one. And so you can trigger it yourself. It's free. It's a little gift for me. This one, yeah. So you can play. play so that. well, like, you play around with that, and if you have a push, great. Just go into user mode. Everything will be mapped automatically for you, uh, uh, and, and that, that means you can already uh, try all these effects. If you haven't got stutter edit, uh, isotope stutter edit, well, then all these, this, this part of the push will be uh, obsolete. But still, you can use the template. And if you haven't got uh, uh, the, the, the reactor. I'm giving you the patch, by the way, the, the, the reactor patch I was using for these buttons here. Well, if you don't have reactor, then you can't, you know, use the, these uh, cool looping functions I was doing for the glitch bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But otherwise, um, you know, you, you can you can play with what what, what you get and cool. bring your own sounds in it and start, you know, moving on with that and building your own template, or just grab some racks and put them in your workflow, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, nice one. So we got some questions here quickly. Um, mm -hmm. We we'll get them before we finish. Um, Rock. Last <coughs> guy and Bree was asking, yeah, are you in user mode in your push, which you are, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's user mode. It's not, it doesn't automatically sync up with live. You have to just map it yourself. It's just like a normal controller, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's okay, got loads cool. of buttons on it, which is great. Um, yeah, someone was asking about your feedback, mm -hmm. um, which was asking, uh, all the channels seem to be clipping except for the master channel. Isn't it a problem for digital distortion? No, uh, you have what we call 32-bit float in Ableton Live. Uh, you can go, go way in the red on the channels. There's, it doesn't distort at all. The master, yeah. yeah, the master is a problem, but the channels have a huge headroom. You can't see it. It's got a huge headroom. Do the experiment at home. Just stick one gain. Uh, utility, it's called, in, in Ableton Live, isn't it? Yeah. Boost, boost, your mas boost your channel and then um, have a copy of it in a return that is not boosted. And then bring the, the fader down to level up the, 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 the two channels. And you're going to find that even though you, you've, put, you've put five or six utilities and you've cranked up the gain all the way full, if you compensate with the, 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 the fader, there's absolutely the same sound. There's absolutely no distortion in Chris. Yeah. Yeah. So the distortion only happens on the ma when yeah. the master clips. Yeah, okay, cool. on the, 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 the summing. Um, nice one. So Abdelism is asking, how do you mix tracks with very different BPMs on the fly, maintaining the sync? Well, that's something that Ableton does. Very well. Well, yeah, that's what yeah, that's what Ableton broke uh, on on the table when when it first came out. I mean, it's called warping, isn't it? So yeah. uh, there's a limit to how far you can go from the original tempo of the track. Uh, and that's valid for DJs and laugh set. Um, mostly when you're slowing down, I would say, in my opinion, 10%, maybe 15% slower than the original tempo, and you you're losing quite a lot of the quality of the sound. When you go faster, however. Uh, the sound quality doesn't degrade as fast, but you kind of lose the groove quite quickly. You know, if you, if you build a groove at 130 BPM, as soon as you get over 140, it depends on the groove, but in some grooves, as soon as you speed them up, well, you lose the, you lose the bounce, yeah. you lose the groove in it. You, know? you lose the sexiness. You lose the sexiness. <laughs> exactly, that's the word. Yes, exactly. So we got one more question, which I just have to get in before we finish. Yeah. Um, Tuna Super is asking, what product are you using your hair? <laughs> it's all natural, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Looks good. All right, so hopefully you got plenty of tips for the weekend. If you're thirsty for more, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklondon.com. And as Freddie mentioned, you can head over to Plugged In, our brand new social network for producers and DJs at community.pointblanklondon.com, where you can download Freddie's We'll be back next Friday for the NFL.